continue our worship on the theme of amazing bodies, what parts of the body have we thought about so far? We've learned how our body has many parts that have to work together to move and get things done. We've discovered how complex our brains are at processing all our thoughts and emotions. Today, we will be thinking about skin. Did you know that our skin makes up a fifth of our whole body weight and it performs many special jobs? Our skin is a waterproof barrier that keeps out germs and microbes that might make us sick. Our skin helps us to regulate our body temperature. We sweat when we're too hot. We get goosebumps when we're too cold. The nerve endings in our skin send messages to our brain. The brain can interpret these messages and tell us what's going on. This can be very useful, for example, if you touch something very hot, you will take your hand away before it gets burnt. Blind people can use their sense of touch to read, reading a series of dots which they can feel through their fingertips. People are different colours because of a substance called melanin, which is found in the top layer of the skin. It makes people's skin darker or lighter, and it helps protect people from the sun's rays. Our Bible story today is from the New Testament book of Luke, chapter 10. One day, a teacher of the law came up to Jesus and asked him a question. Jesus, he said, what does somebody need to do in order to be friends with God? Well, Jesus knew that this was a very wise man who knew the scriptures. And so he replied with a question. What does it say in the scriptures? Jesus asked. Well, the man being very wise said, oh, it says to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. That's correct, Jesus replied. If you do that, God will be really pleased. Well, then the teacher of the law was trying to trick Jesus and catch him out. He asked another question. Who then is my neighbour? And Jesus replied to his question with this story. A man was travelling from Jerusalem to Jericho along a very dangerous stretch of road. Suddenly, and without warning, from behind one of the rocks jumped out two robbers. The robbers stole his clothes, they took his belongings and they beat him up and left him for dead on the ground and then they ran away. Not long after, a priest from the temple in Jerusalem walked along the road. Will he help the man? What do you think? No, instead of helping the man, he walked past quickly on the other side of the road and carried on with his journey. The next person to come along was a priest's helper known as a Levite. Surely he would help the man. What do you think? No, he didn't help the man either. He quickly walked past and ignored the man and carried on with his journey. The next person to come past was a Samaritan. Samaritans came from the north of Israel and they didn't usually like or get on with the people from Jerusalem. So do you think the Samaritan will help the man? Yes, the Samaritan did help the man. Let's see what he did. As he walked towards him, he bandaged his wounds. He put ointment and oil on his grazes. He gave him a drink of water and he put the man on his donkey to continue the journey. Um, yeah, OK, I know that's not quite a donkey. It's a cow, but you get the idea. The Samaritan led the man on his donkey all the way to a nearby inn. He said to the innkeeper, please take care of this man and when I return, I will repay you for any money you've spent on him. As Jesus finished telling this story to his audience, he asked the question, 
Who do you think was a neighbour to this man? I wonder who you think. The teacher of the law answered, Surely the one who showed him such love. Jesus said to him, Go and do the same for your neighbours. So why then do you think the priests and the Levites didn't want to help the man in the story? That's a really good question, Katie. You know what? I think it's because they were, like you said, priests and Levites. So they're quite important people in their society. So I think they even thought they were better than him. Really? Oh, yes, I think that's not great at all. Also, he was a Samaritan. So he was different. He was from a different country. He probably spoke a different language. He probably looked very different from them. And they felt they didn't want to help people that were different to them. Oh, I see. And so as Christians, we believe that God sees everyone as equal. Is that right? Most definitely, Katie. For example, look at me and you. We look very different, don't we? We are, Our aren't we? Are quite very different. different. <laughs> but to God, we are still just equally important. That's good news. Well, look, I've got very freckly skin. And I've got brown skin. And yet God loves both of us just as much as everyone else. Absolutely. Fantastic. So what does our story mean? It means that God sees us all people. It means that we should help each other, whatever colour we are, whatever skin tone, whatever language, whatever country we come from. It means that if we're in the playground and we see children who are not being nice to each other, we should tell the teacher, get some help. Jesus taught Christians to help anybody who needs our help. Sometimes we will see things in this world that we know are unfair. What can we do? We can tell our teachers at school. We can tell our parents at home. We could write a letter to our member of parliament. How can we speak out against injustice? Racism can affect people's everyday lives. The famous singer, Leona Lewis, realized one day when she was shopping in a shop that the shopkeeper became very uncomfortable whenever she touched something. White people in the shop were able to pick things up and look at them. The thing that shocked her most, she said, is that she felt that the other people in the shop could see how she was being treated, but they didn't do anything to stop it happening. They didn't speak out to help her. And so, sometimes though, we hear or see things that aren't fair, don't we? What do you think we should do in that situation? I know, Katie, it's very sad when that happens, isn't it? But life sometimes is a little bit unfair. If ever we find ourselves in that situation, there's a couple of things we could do. Firstly, we could find somebody that we trust, maybe a close friend mm -hmm. or maybe a, a responsible adult, and we can speak to them. If we're at home, we can maybe possibly speak to our parents or our carer or a close relative. Sometimes, though, we might find it difficult to talk talk and in that case we can write things down maybe in a, in a journal or in a diary on a piece of paper and maybe share it a little bit later on. That's a really good idea. Thank you for that Rachel. Would you... Throughout history black people have often been treated very badly because of the colour of their skin. Sometimes black people feel they have to work twice as hard as white people to get to the same place. Discrimination is always wrong and we should fight against it. Discrimination can harm people's mental health and it can affect the way they see themselves. Black History Month is celebrated in October to celebrate the achievements of black people. It is a way of combating racism. Would you like to pray for us today? Of course I would. Thank you. That'd be great. Dear God, thank you for making us all very different. Thank you so much for loving all of us equally, no matter what the colour is of our skin. And help us to always remember to treat everybody equally and to help those in need of help. Amen. Amen. 
In this collective worship, we have been thinking about our skin and how useful it is. We've also been thinking about how some people are discriminated against because of the colour of their skin. We are thinking about how we should speak out against injustice whenever we see it.